Good afternoon. On behalf of the Harbor College of Business here at Auburn University, I'm excited to, to be with you all this afternoon for the Auburn Online MBA Insider uh, event. My name is Jim Parrish. I'm the Executive Director of the Full-Time and Online MBA programs in the Harbor College of Business, and I'm excited to share with you uh, a couple of our outstanding Auburn uh, online students that have been part of the program and talk about the journey uh, that they've been on so far for their program. Let me welcome Hillary Butler and Josh Jones and they will share a brief introduction before we kick off this event. At this time, I'll turn it over to Hillary. Hillary? Thanks, Jim. Thank you everyone for having us tonight. Um, I'm super excited to be here to talk about my experience. I graduated in May of 2020, so I got to experience the virtual graduation from from the program, which was really interesting and fun, and they did a great job. Um, but I had seven years of experience prior to uh, joining the MBA program, graduated with my undergrad from Purdue University in 2010, and I decided that I was going to work several years before I pursued my MBA. And um, I waited about five years to really start looking and pursuing. And so when I started looking at different programs, um, I really wanted to look at different schools that uh, not only were nationally known and, and ranked in a, in a top 10 way, and they were also affordable, and then offered the different programs that in classes and in academics that I was looking for. And so there are a lot of opportunities, a lot of different schools out there. I ended up applying for the IU Kelly School of Business in Auburn. And when it boiled down to it, um, I really looked at what Auburn had to um, to offer and I uh, ended up choosing it for its flexibility and affordability. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, Jim, and uh, thanks for having me here today. Uh, I appreciate the time and I'm uh, looking forward to spending time with everyone here and, uh, you know, sharing a little bit about my Auburn story. Uh, as Jim said, my name's Joshua Jones. Uh, I live just south of Birmingham in a town called Chelsea about two and a half hours away from Auburn. Um, I'm currently uh, work in the investment management industry for an SEC and reg registered investment advisory firm uh, in Birmingham, uh, where I'm currently a compliance officer, which basically means, you know, I make sure the company and everyone follows the rules, which makes me everybody's favorite person or not, you know, depending on who it is. Um, Brief background, so I graduated uh, undergrad from Alabama in 2014, and then I spent a couple of years out in the professional environment. Started my Auburn program in 2017, and I am anticipating graduating in May 2021, assuming I don't add any more uh, graduate certificates or anything like that. Um, I am a, uh, doing a dual degree, uh, both MBA and a master's in finance. And I'm also doing a graduate graduate certificate in management information systems. So I'm happy, you know, throughout this this webinar to answer any questions about that. Um, thanks again for having me. I'm looking forward to speaking with everyone and answering any questions anybody may have. And uh, I'll hand it back over to you, Jim. All right. Thanks, Josh. We appreciate it. And Hillary, we're glad you guys are here. Uh, we're looking forward to talking with you a little bit later about your experience. And uh, before we do that, we're going to kind of offer a brief overview. Uh, of, of what we do here in the Auburn MBA program in the online space. Um, we invite you to submit questions that you would have uh, to our, our time together with Josh and Hillary. Um, the best way to get your questions answered, obviously, is to ask those. We would like for you to please use the Q&A feature only, and that will allow us to streamline questions we are receiving uh, as well as the responses. Um, where's the Q&A feature, you might ask? It's uh, gonna be at the bottom of your screen. And clicking that Q&A icon will open up a window where you can ask your question. And feel free to ask any question you would like to our panel. Uh, we'll do our best to, to answer all your questions. Uh, and if we cannot answer your questions today, we will definitely uh, get with you via email after today to help, you know, get all your questions answered so you have the information that you need. In terms of talking about our program a little bit, you just wanted to kind of uh, mention a few things, really the advantages as you begin your research and, and why the Auburn program uh, should be one that you should be researching. Uh, as you heard Josh and Hillary talk about their research and what they did, uh, there's a lot of common themes. And so one of the things is to talk about the advantages of our program. Our program is very uh, highly and nationally ranked by several recruiting, uh, or excuse me, survey bodies out there. Uh, Poets and Quants, U.S. News and World Report, Princeton Review, 
all consistently rank Auburn as a very uh, high quality top ranked program. We have longevity in our space. Uh, if you look at different reports, we may be the second oldest uh, distance MBA program in the country with having a foundation of over 30 years as part of our uh, online space and online learning. So we have a strong foundation with the faculty and resources to back it up. So having a, a space or having a timeline of 30 plus years is very powerful in this space. Uh, our students tell us all the time that we offer a very uh, flexible delivery model. Uh, the flexibility is why a lot of students choose our program. Uh, you can stop and start at different times. Uh, there is a, a window of six years that you have to complete the degree. Uh, so that flexibility is powerful for working professionals who are trying to juggle school and work and, and family life and all those kind of things. Flexibility is a major, major component and, and we're proud of how we offer that in the online space. The affordability and how we're competitively priced is a very uh, powerful space as well. Um, our, our rankings uh, are aligned with our price point and we are feel strong in, in that regard. Our, our program being a, attached to a land grant institution means that we wanna focus on um, access and um, excellence and that price point that we have allows us to do both those things. Uh, we have um, a, a gold standard in accreditation as you look for different types of programs to pursue, you wanna look for AACSB accreditation. That is the gold standard for accreditation and only 4% of business schools worldwide have AACSB. So Auburn has good company and the schools that you may be researching will allow you to, to handle that and, and be the place you wanna to go to. On the screen in front of you, you will see a sample curriculum. You will see here that there are uh, nine core classes that we offer that give you a great foundation uh, in business. We cover all aspects of business as you look at these core classes. Uh, we also have four elective options. And if you combine all those hours together, you will know that our online MBA program degree can be achieved in 39 credit hours. Um, so we have areas of focus to customize your MBA experience with areas such as business analytics, uh, cybersecurity, uh, information systems, and also supply chain. So these uh, certificates can be, be customized for graduate certificates. And so a graduate certificate in the uh, graduate management education space is a additional credential. And so you can earn this additional credential that will go alongside your MBA diploma while also earning that degree uh, in concert. So it's not something you have to do additionally. You can just identify as a graduate certificate seeker while also getting your MBA and also add that second credential as a deeper dive for your experience. For our most deep dive in the program, we do have dual degree options. As you heard Josh mentioned earlier, he is a, a dual degree and grad certificate seeker. He's one of our uh, higher achievers in our program and wants to complete as much as he can. Um, so the dual degrees are a fantastic option. So dual degree options with a master's of finance, uh, a master's of information systems, and those with an engineering background, we also have a, a dual degree MBA with industrial and systems engineering. What this allows you to do is for a few additional hours, uh, you can be both a generalist, which an MBA degree is by definition, as well as a specialist with that dual degree. So it is a little bit more time, a little bit more investment of resources for you, but when you finish your program, you will leave here with both a master's in business and one of these specialized areas as well. In terms of, of how we see a return on investment, um, we believe our competitively priced program allows our students to see a great ROI. The current price point for our online MBA program is $900 per credit hour, and you are billed for what you take. So the total right now for the online MBA is $35,000, and there are no hidden fees. Um, there is a, a confirmation fee that you would have to pay if you choose to uh, uh, answer our offer of acceptance to the program, uh, and then also a small graduation fee at the end but other than that, you are, you are billed for what you register for. Um, so we believe that having that price point of just over $35,000 is, 
is very competitive. And we see the, the average uh, incoming salary and average outgoing salary, it's a very high ROI for our students. Um, so the 20% the average increase of salary at graduation is, is a real number and students are seeing those real results on the investment they made. So we're very proud of, of what our students are achieving in terms of negotiating with their current employer or pivoting to a new uh, employer and leveraging that degree uh, from a financial standpoint on top of all the things that they've learned as part of their, part of their program. For admissions to our program, we have two intakes a year. We have an intake in the fall semester as well as spring uh, intake. So for being admitted to the program, there are several things that we would like for you to do to be considered. The Auburn University Graduate School has an online application that we ask you to submit to be considered uh, for the online MBA. As you apply through that portal, please select the distance option for students, or for, excuse me, for application if you are indeed seeking the online MBA. We would seek your transcripts from every institution that you have attended, uh, so any junior colleges, community colleges, and obviously the conferred degree location will be desirable. Um, the letters of recommendation uh, are also done in electronic format. Uh, so if you believe you're going to apply for the next few months for our, our fall 2021 intake, we would encourage you to begin contacting those recommenders and let them know that you will be applying for our online MBA program. The professional statement allows us a picture of, of what you've been doing in your career uh, since undergrad and also why you believe that you will be an excellent candidate for the Auburn Online MBA program. So we recommend you spend some time on that professional statement that will allow you to help the admissions committee learn more about you, what maybe a, a transcript or a GMAT or GRE score will not show. Uh, we also would like a professional resume to review. Uh, we wanna see what you've done, any growth in your positions and overall uh, professional narrative that you have there. And finally, uh, we do have GMAT and GRE test scores that are uh, looked at for admission. There are certain criteria that we uh, would advise on any kind of GMAT waiver, but we do look at that GMAT or GRE for admission uh, to the program. So just to give you an idea uh, about what our current online MBA class looks like, the profile of our incoming students. The average student in our program has about 20, excuse me, has about six years of, of work experience in a professional capacity. So that is post undergraduate work experience uh, that is labeled there. The average GPA coming out of undergraduate is about a 3.3. And the average uh, score for those that submit a GMAT is about 600. Our online MBA program uh, spans across the country with 44 states being represented uh, in our, our population of students. And as we mentioned before, we admit uh, twice per year uh, for a fall intake in, in August and then a spring intake in the early part of January. So now we got through that information to kind of give you an overview. Hopefully there are some questions that were, were answered there. Um, but I'd like to, to jump back into uh, talking with Josh and Hillary, kind of the reasons you guys came today, because this being an, an Auburn Online MBA Insider panel, we wanted you to hear from the, the talent that's on, on showcase today. So um, I guess I'll start guys and, and kind of just, if you don't mind, uh, give us a little bit of, of, of a pathway and, and what led you to choose um, the Auburn MBA and Hillary, I'll start with you on that question, okay? Sure, yeah, and I, I touched on it a little bit um, and I wanna kind of go back and, and talk a little bit about my work experience. When I graduated um, in 2010, as I mentioned, I. Uh, worked in higher education fundraising, and that was primarily my career prior to, to starting my MBA program. And like I mentioned, I worked in uh, higher education for seven years. And throughout that time, I always knew that I, I wanted to pursue my MBA. And I even worked at the Northwestern Business School, which really kind of jump-started the thought process. And I was able to get some questions answered just in general about what it looks like to get an MBA. And so I really started thinking about what does that look like for me? What do I want to do in my career? What do I hope to achieve? 
Um, and during that time, during that seven years, it really, it, it kind of came to me that, that working in the nonprofit industry was, was important to me and something that I really wanted to do and go into fundraising in a mission-based uh, capacity. So I took a job with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is where I currently am right now. I'm the senior director of major gifts and planned giving for the Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky chapter. And my goal is to one day be able to be the president and CEO of a chapter. And so in knowing that, I knew I needed to get the experience and the educational background that would help leverage me and getting that experience and that knowledge. And so I decided to pursue my MBA um, and start applying for programs in 2017. And as I mentioned, I applied for a couple of schools, IU being one of them, and ultimately chose Auburn just because, um, as Jim mentioned, all of the advantages that are offered, the flexibility, the affordability, um, the different academic rigor that is offered and different opportunities to um, explore different uh, paths like supply chain, things of that nature were very attractive to me. And then the affordability piece was the, the ultimate deciding factor for me. And um, I couldn't have been happier with the choice that I made. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Josh, a little bit of a background on your path that led you to the program. Sure. So my Auburn story really begins about a year before I started the program. Um, kind of similar to uh, Hillary, uh, I, I have aspirations to go into senior management within my, my industry, my field. And so a year before I started the program or when I wanted to start an MBA program, I kind of set out some criteria that I was looking for. Um, I'm, a, I'm a value long-term investor at heart. So that means I constantly look for a high return on my investment something that continually pays dividends and you know so i applied that same criteria to the mba program and as i was doing my research i mean as jim alluded to earlier in the presentation return on investment on an auburn degree is extremely high um, an auburn degree is highly recognized nationally if not globally uh, so i know anywhere i go it will carry weight wherever I, or wherever i go and it will continually pay dividends. Um, you know, to me, an MBA is not just a check the box exercise. I want something that I can really engage in, something that I can really learn from, pull from, and use in my everyday experience. And, uh, you know, doing my research, I kept coming back to Auburn. Um, and uh, in terms of value, Auburn's extremely competitive in terms of in, in the tuition that it charges, which, you know, creates a huge value opportunity there. And in conjunction with the flexibility for a dual degree, I wanted to get a dual degree from the onset, um, just, you know, to have a little bit more background in finance. So I wanted to add that master's in finance and being able to do that remotely um, with only having to come on campus for, you know, the, the culmination course, the track course at the end of the program it was very appealing. So that that flexibility and the value in conjunction with the name that Auburn is uh, really what, you know, made Auburn my first choice. So, um, so I applied to that program. There are many great other programs out there, but Auburn really checked all my boxes for that. And, you know, hopefully we can unpack different things of that throughout the conversation. But, um, you know, Auburn was, you know, through the research, it clearly rose to the top. Good. That's, that's great. I appreciate both of you sharing those things. And, and we got some questions coming in, which, are, which is great. So please keep those questions coming as, as our, um, our audience members have those questions. Josh, you, you alluded to something um, in terms of, of, of track, and, and I know that, that in speaking with you and speaking with Hillary, um, you know, that's something that was, was of interest um, to you. And, and that's one of those uh, extracurricular activities and, and things that are in addition to being an online student. So Hillary, can you talk about the, uh, the track experience and also kind of what other events that you've been a part of as you've uh, earned this degree that would would be of a kind of an experiential educational uh, item for to go along with your your curriculum. Absolutely, yeah. Um, the track experience was probably my uh, most influential and in, in the experience I got the most out of in my my time at Auburn. I worked in a group project on on the, with Shipt, which is located and headquartered in Alabama. And from start to finish, um, doing a live consulting project uh, and working with Dr. Stanwick on it and in the rest of the class was just 
remarkable and I learned so much um, just about what that would look like in, in a real world setting from, from an HR perspective to sales to, to many different facets of, of their business. And so the culmination of getting to go on campus and present to the shift executives and uh, meet with my classmates, meet some of the Auburn administration as well and get to be on campus was was truly impactful and um, one that I have been able to immediately apply many of the things that I learned in my in my current role and in my current career and um, I, I've seen in from different aspects of it of uh, just um, learning to have different kinds of conversations types of conversations applying uh, many of the principles that I learned in uh, many of the techniques and, and skills that I have uh, to use in my career on a day-to-day -day basis. That is um, something I wasn't expecting necessarily to take from that opportunity, but one that was absolutely, um, I, I was surprised and, and pleasantly surprised to be able to get that experience. Good. And, and that sounds like a memorable experience to come to campus. And just for our audience members, when we say the word track, it's it's an acronym that stands for uh, Team Resourced Applied Consulting. It is a uh, a experiential event where online students come to campus and do a uh, presentation for a final project to a live client. That and Hillary was on on the ship team that that gave a a uh, group project presentation back uh, in the fall of last year. And Josh, you you talked about some memorable experiences that you've had as part of the program. Talk about those and kind of what you've been involved with as an online student. Sure. So kind of the strongest selling point I've always had for the Auburn program is that, you know, while it may be an online program, you feel as though you're an on-campus student. And, you know, I never felt more that way than uh, when I was able to partake in the international experience that uh, Auburn offered in 2018 um, in Croatia. Um, you know, a few online students, got to go with the uh, on-campus students to engage with the Croatian businesses, you know, to better understand the global economy, international relations, how business operates in a global environment. And we were all one cohort representing Auburn together. You know, there was no singularity between the online campus or the online students, on-campus students. Um, you know, I made relationships during that experience that I still maintain and hope to maintain going forward. Um, it was truly one of the most remarkable experiences I've been on in my, in my academic and professional career. And, you know, just being able to engage in that really, you know, brought that on campus feel and like I was really part of the true uh, MBA class program uh, was incredible. And, you know, I highly recommend, you know, that experience to anybody. And so, um, you know, there's so many memorable events I've been you know, able to partake in at Auburn. I'm in the track course this semester. And, but, you know, there's also in the majority of your classes, you'll work on team projects, team events. And, um, you know, depending on where you live, there's oftentimes a lot of students that at Auburn within your same city. So you can meet with them and have coffee. You can do all kinds of stuff to, you know, further um, network and meet and just kind of mingle. So you, you never feel like an isolated student to me, at least in my experience. And uh, you always feel like, you know, you're part of the program. Good, good. Thank you for sharing those. It's a, I like what you said about it feels like you're part of the, the campus program and one MBA, even though the, mo the modality is different. And that's a great, I think, a great piece of our program that you do feel that connection to Auburn uh, at large. So, so one of the things that we try and talk about with our online students, I think it's a little bit different than being in a full-time program, is the fact that you are engaging in education and, and learning about a topic or subject matter while also going to work for your organization. And so one of the things that we like to talk about is learn today and then use tomorrow, because unlike a full-time program where they will experience a full-time education and then graduate and culminate their degree and then go back or pivot back to a career, um, the, the online program allows you to, to learn something the day before and apply it the next day. Uh, Hillary, do you have any examples uh, about that being a, a, a relative thing that is, is in your experience with the online program? Absolutely, yeah. And I, I mentioned too of uh, just the, um, I've already been able to apply so much from my, from my time um, 
a couple of examples come to mind. One being um, one of the elective courses I took was big data. And um, it was a phenomenal course just to, to broaden my horizons. Uh, I will have to say in my day to day career, um, looking at spreadsheets and data, that's not something I do all the time. I'm, I'm out and about, I'm customer interfacing, things of that nature. So it's a really, it was a great exercise for me to take a step back and say, this is really important. These are things you need to learn. These are very applicable. And as I was going through that course, I was able to take a deep dive into our database, into some of the data that we use to help uh, navigate our work and help uh, kind of point us in the right direction. And I was able to uh, see some trends, go to my boss and say, hey, I'm seeing this. We, uh, these are some untapped areas in our organization that I think we could absolutely improve on. And from that, I was able to take a, a very large project and, and really help our organization uh, move forward in the fundraising um, arena, but also with our, our WISH families and, and helping better serve um, our community. And, and in the end of the day, that's, that's what we're there for our, for our mission. And so being able to go through a class that right then and there, I, it opened my eyes to a brand new world that had I not been in that right away, I don't think I would have necessarily seen that opportunity if I was just in a course, I was able to apply it immediately. And that was really, really great. And then several of the other classes that had to do with, with management and just um, having difficult conversations. And, and you get this throughout the whole program when you're working with teams. I think everybody knows different teams, different people, how people have different learning styles, different working styles. And so you have to learn to adapt to people and be able to, to work together. And so I was able to apply some of the principles I learned just from working in groups, but also in, from the curriculum directly to um, working with some new colleagues. And we um, also have a couple of remote employees as well that, well, now we're all remote, but uh, before that, that were remote, that helped navigate some of the conversations and working relationships that I had internally with some of my colleagues. That was, it, I just can't express enough how much it was extremely helpful to, to be able to grow those relationships. And, and in return, we were much more effective as a team. So I took a lot of those experiences and were able to apply that directly. Josh, uh, any other feedback on that in terms of the app, the application from the degree to your, to your job? For sure. Absolutely. And I feel like that's an advantage that really the online prog or students have over the on campus, you know, that we are able to learn, you know, at night when you come home and then the next day you can apply it. Um, you know, there, there have been definite times, you know, throughout my program where I've been able to extrapolate, you know, the curriculum that we're using, apply it to my everyday career. Um, just thinking of the most recent example being this past summer semester, I took the information assurance and security class. And we were talking about how to go about conducting proper risk assessments, IT risk assessments, business impact analysis. And it, it was very pertinent, especially now in this pandemic environment, people are having to, you know, implement uh, business continuity plans, disaster recovery plans. This class kind of walked you through the mechanics of being able to do that properly. And so, you know, kind of going through that uh, into the class and the next day, you know, I was able to go into work and, you know, we're, you know, we're working on the same things and I was able to think about it from a different angle. And, you know, there were some gaps that, you know, we were definitely missing, whether it be matrix of controls or, you know, uh, data security protocols that you know, I, I really didn't even think about. And until I took that class. And so we were, you know, definitely able to carry that forward just the next day. And um, a lot of things, you know, are learned through muscle memory. And I feel like that's, you know, a muscle memory experience, being able to learn and put it in practice the next day. Um, and this semester, um, I'm in the database design and development class. And, you know, pro and we're learning how to design a database, search database, use SQL. And I'm currently working with our data management team now on how to, you know, query certain databases to pull information for analytics. And, you know, now I can help communicate this or communicate our requirements to our team more efficiently just because I'm learning how to speak that language, so to speak. Because I mean, to me, it's foreign. It's like looking at a completely different language, but uh, now I'm able to understand that a little bit better. But there's so many things like that, that, you know, throughout your program um, that you'll be able to pull from and, you know, uh, one piece of advice I give too is that 
you know, if you're currently, you know, depending on what kind of projects you have coming up throughout um, your year and your career, schedule classes that might be pertinent to that. You know, I did that. Um, I was studying for the CFA exam, so I scheduled, you know, some financial classes. And so, like, you know, you have that flexibility, and it, 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 it was very beneficial. Good. There's, there's a lot of things that, that students always ask about in terms of uh, balancing time, managing this, as it's, as it's something that's very, um, you know, it, it becomes an extension of who you are. You know, we, we counsel our new students all the time, and you were there at one time trying to decide how do you, how do you balance everything? How do, you, how do you juggle? How do you make it all work to where you've got professional, you've got personal, and then now you have academic obligations to, to manage? So, so Josh, I'll come to you with this first question, then Hillary, we can wrap, wrap that one up with you, is that, you know, what recommendations do you have for prospective students that are looking to begin an online degree, knowing that they're going to maintain full-time family, full-time job, and, and part-time school? What, what, what thoughts and advice and, and stories do you, can you share with them? Sure. So the first thing I tell people is that you don't have to go into the program knowing exactly how you're going to maintain that balance. It can fluctuate. Things happen. Over the course of my program, I've started four new jobs and moved across the country twice. And, uh, you know, so I, I had to be able to be flexible and Auburn was able to be flexible with me. Um, so, you know, as you're going into the beginning of your program, you know, kind of let information wash over you. Um, depending on, you know, your course load, um, just kind of take it in and then you, you'll figure it out. You're not, you're not going to sink. You're not, you know, you, you'll figure it out. So just let it wash over you. Um, you know, it, there will be times where, you know, you may not be able to go out and watch a football game with somebody depending on, you know, kind of what the course load is. But I mean, it's like that with any, any uh, educational program, but I mean, you, you'll be able to adapt and, um, you know, don't, it's okay to change. Um, for some semesters, you know, based on my work schedule, I, I wasn't able to do a lot, uh, like I wanted to get off the week. So on Saturdays, I was able to go to Starbucks, sit there for four or six hours and kind of just knock out my schoolwork. And then there's some semesters where, you know, I was able to, you know, watch classes every day. So that flexibility, um, you know, I keep coming back to that word, uh, that word but it, it really is one of the strong benefits of this program. And, uh, you know, and just, you know, just knowing that, you know, you're going to be able to handle it. Auburn provides resources. Uh, you know, there's so many people in the Auburn family, Auburn community that can help you through this. And um, it's okay to be able to adapt and change. Hillary, any other thoughts on, on the, that question? Yeah, absolutely. I like what Josh said in that um, don't, don't think that you're going to have it all figured out right away. And it's totally okay. Give yourself a little grace. Give yourself some time to, to really um, figure out what, what schedule really works from you um, and, and really make it work for your schedule. And so I think my biggest thing too, to piggyback off of that is to surround yourself with a network, get yourself a network of people um, that are going to be understanding that you might not be able to go watch that football game with them, or um, maybe it's grabbing early morning coffee versus going out to dinner or something like that, where you can still stay connected with your network, but it's going to look a little bit different while you're in school and having people be understanding of that and, and also being understanding of that of yourself. It's a, it's a time commitment and you really have to work on your time management, but it's extremely doable. And, and on top of that too, and, and I'll, kind of give a personal experience. Uh, when I very first started the program, um, I had some personal stuff come up in my life that I needed to, to really focus on. And I was able to email the uh, administration office and explain to them and say, hey, this is kind of my personal situation that I'm going through right now. I'm, I'm still enrolled in the classes, but I want to let you know that I've got some other things that have just taken my, my attention elsewhere that really need to be there. And it's going to be a couple weeks. And not only were they extremely understanding, as were the professors, uh, they checked back in with me. They called me. They said, hey, how are you doing? And um, to know that you have a strong personal network in, in your life, but also then in the school that really care about you as a person and want you to succeed and want you to find whatever schedule works best for you and whatever uh, time frame works for you, that's 
extremely, that, that was helpful for me and it eased my concerns about how am I going to juggle all of this and I just can't say enough good things about the administration and how they were able to help me balance all of that and make sure I stayed on track. And also it's temporary. This is not a permanent change you're making yeah. in your life. I mean, except for me who I feel like I will constantly always be in school just because I constantly do different things and I'm addicted to being a student, I guess, but it's temporary and uh, it will end, but it's, it's an investment. Yeah, it's a commitment for sure. Good, good. Thank you both. Um, all right. Well, that, that kind of warmed us up and we have had some questions coming in from, from the audience. So uh, please keep those coming in as you have questions that, that may have not quite been answered yet, but but Hillary, I'm going to go back to you with this first question from the audience. And, and basically it was, uh, what type of, of time um, should you commit per week for, for studying, for, for prepping, for watching the, the lectures? Uh, and also, what type of uh, assignments or projects did you see from both qualitative and quantitative courses in our program. So kind of a double question there, but if you can kind of provide some insight to that, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so throughout my time, I typically took two courses per, per semester. And so um, typically I watched the lectures twice a week and those ranged from an hour to an hour and a half. So you can guess about three hours just watching the lectures. I will say, for me, there were some courses that I watched it one time through and it just clicked and it just, I was able to take notes and um, if I needed to email the professor and ask any follow-up questions, um, I could do that. There were some lectures that I needed to go back and watch because it just didn't click the first time through. And so um, I would say uh, there were times where I was, I was spending eight to 10 hours a week um, on homework and uh, making sure that I stayed up with the concepts. And then other times it was a little less and in courses that maybe just clicked a little bit more. Um, I think, again, like I mentioned before, it is a time commitment. And I think just watching the lectures is, um, not going to necessarily be helpful if, you, if you're in a program you want to make sure you're taking something away from it and not just kind of going through the motions so really diving into uh watching the lectures making sure you keep up with readings and things like that is very important so i made the dedication to at least spend eight to ten hours a week on, on doing that and um with certain classes like the the track program and certain other courses um you have to be extremely flexible. I had times where I was meeting at 10 o'clock at night with group members. And so that's just a different time frame. That's a, and sometimes then you're staying up later to complete the work so that you can turn things in the following day. Again, it's temporary, but you have to make that commitment. And um, I think it, it's well worth it. Good. Um, Josh, uh, several questions coming in about dual degree. Um, so since that's part of your, uh, your plan and what you're doing, can you talk about, you know, how some of the courses have overlapped with a dual degree, like the MBA content and also your specialized masters and also, you know, what is the right number of classes maybe that you found is successful to, to manage everything? So some people looking at taking one or two classes per semester, talk about that and how it relates maybe to that pursuit of a dual degree. Sure. So um, kind of first on the overlap, so the, the MBA program, you know, as Jim alluded to, is a generalist type of degree. So you cover a wide spectrum of different information. You're very well rounded in the different material that you'll be able to come across. Um, and for me, like the uh, specialization degree in master's in finance just kind of takes that finance information that you go over in the MBA to just a little bit different, higher level a little bit more in the weeds, so to speak. And so, um, you know, you'll have uh, a core class in MBA financial analysis with, uh, with Dr. Yost and, uh, you know, some of my finance classes just kind of took his material as the base and then we just built upon it. Um, a little bit more quantitative and, um, you know, a little bit more in depth. Uh, but there definitely is overlap and I will say like, you know, there's nothing that I've come across um, in my finance degree or, or the classes for my master's in finance, um, unless it's like an elective that's um, just out there um, that I have not at least had a base of information in my MBA curriculum. Um, and so, you know, there, there is 
a lot of overlap. Luckily, too, you can, uh, you know, pick uh, electives and finance classes that, you know, if you're really interested in real estate, you can take the real estate finance class, and, you know, that'll count towards your degree, which is what I did. Um, and then, you know, some of the classes may be taught by teachers in the MBA program. So um, it's, it's definitely, um, it's not two separate things. It's definitely, you know, you can definitely see overlap and uh, cohesion between the, both of those programs. Um, you know, kind of in regards to uh, project work, uh, time commitment, things like that, I will definitely say that I, I, I never took more than two classes a semester um, just because, you know, working a full-time job. I didn't want to overextend myself um, for two years. I lived in a new city, so I wanted to leave, you know, a little bit of time to be able to go out and explore and then, um, you know, wanted to hang out with my wife. So, um, but, you know, there are some people, I know someone that's taken four classes this semester. It, it all depends on what kind of, you know, what kind of person you are um, and, you know, how much you really just enjoy learning. And so, uh, and if you're a quantitative or qualitative person, you know, it depends on how you load your schedule. Um, but, you know, I, I like the two classes because, you know, there was, like I said, some time sacrifices you had to make, but you know, there, there was still time to spend, you know, out doing stuff with your friends or with your family. And, um, you know, and, you know, or you can play catch up in the summer, take some extra classes or take the summers off. So it really depends on you um, and, you know, and what you feel like doing. And, um, but, you know, regarding the dual degree, I, I'm always happy to answer questions. If you have, you know, anyone has any particular questions, um, I think they'll give out our contact information at the end of this. So feel free to reach out. Great. Thank you. And, and just so everybody is aware, about 43% of our MBAs do pursue the dual degree. Um, so it is a, a realistic thing for those who want to pursue that. It's not a have to. Um, there is a separate application process to go through because you are being accepted for a, another master's degree. So that is one thing to kind of keep in mind. All right, let's, let's take um, a little look at accessibility back to campus. Hillary, you alluded to um, the, the, the folks that you interacted with from campus that helped you navigate through some things and, and also kind of over understanding your current situation. Let's talk about faculty accessibility when the need for office hours or communications. Um, and, and with that, um, did any of you um, research or discuss with career services in our office uh, during your time? Can you talk about the accessibility uh, of faculty with office hours and responsiveness and also if you utilize career services as part of your experience? Sure, yeah, I'll go ahead and start. Um, I will say I never once had a class where I did not have um, a TA or a professor that was not uh, accessible. They always tried to, whether it was through Canva or directly via email, there was always a response within 24 hours. Um, and they set those expectations pretty clearly at, at the beginning of each semester of how and when they should be accessed and when they have office hours. And um, there were a couple times I had to make phone calls during my lunch hour and, and things like that. And, and I have a very flexible work schedule anyways, which was very helpful, but um, there wasn't a, a time that I, I didn't feel like I, I couldn't reach out or that I just couldn't get a hold of. And, and kind of to an offshoot of that is that the one thing I will encourage too is um, even if you don't necessarily have a question about the curriculum or you want to talk something get to know your professors, even though you're an online student, take the time to get to know who's teaching you and you never know what you're going to pick up from them or what extra information you're going to get for just of learning their experiences, how they got to where they're at, or they can say, hey, you might want to go talk to this student. They have that similar experience. They, they know their students. They know other faculty members that might be able to help you navigate something in your career or just a topic of interest. Um, I, Josh mentioned Dr. Yost in finance. Well, I, I'm not in finance, but I found out that he was a Purdue Boilermaker. So he and I kind of had a fun banter back and forth. And so take the time to get to know your professors, reach out to them with questions about curriculum outside of that. And um, then to touch on the career services, I personally did not use the career services. I was not um, in need of the those services, but I have 
had some other classmates that have had them and they are extremely accessible and willing to hear about what you want to do in your career, what direction you want to go. The Auburn network, as Josh kind of alluded to, is, is huge and they're loyal to each other and they're going to help and they want to see other Auburn alumni succeed. And so there's a lot of different accessibility throughout the country, different networks, different industries. Um, it, it's, it's a worthwhile service to use if, if it's ever needed. Yeah, just kind of to piggyback off of that, I've, I've never run into an instance where I wasn't able to get a hold of, of a professor. Um, you know, some instances, if you can watch the class live, um, you know, while it's live on campus, they'll some will answer email or answer text messages in the middle of class. Um, and so like, they're, you know, they're always ready to go. Um, and, and, and I also echo the same sentiment of get to know your professors, uh, you know, during the international experience, you know, I sat down and had coffee with Dr. Butler, who is probably the most interesting guy you'll ever meet. And, uh, he's, he's such a cool guy, but, uh, he's got, he's just a wealth of experience and a wealth of knowledge. And, um, but, you know, they, they make so many different avenues available to access uh, your teachers, whether email, text message, personal email, they'll meet you for coffee if you're close by. Um, you know, some will invite you on campus to, you know, partake in their class, which you can, I think, with any class and, um, and in any kind of experience that they offer to on-campus students, they at least try to offer the same or equivalent experience to online students. So it's, it, that's never been an issue for me to get in touch with somebody or lack of communication. Um, they'll always, you know, help you where they need to. Um, I, too, didn't use the career services, um, but I have heard extraordinarily great things uh, about them and the resources they provide and the, uh, the help and guidance they'll, uh, you know, confer upon you. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I would just have to say another strong point, yeah, you, always can get in touch with a professor or TA when you need it. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, another question that's come in is, is regarding kind of a non-academic learning with this program. Obviously, as you make an investment uh, to, a, to a, a degree program, you know, what, what thing can you think about in your experience that's kind of a non-academic learning that you gain from being part of the online uh, program here at Auburn? Uh, sure, I'll start out with that one. So uh, definitely, and this may sound weird for an online program, but I mean, the networking and relationships, I mean, outside of an academic setting, I mean, there's, there's such a diverse student population in this program that, you know, you can meet, you can be in classes with senior executives, someone that's in a, a different, completely different industry that you are, that you, you know, may find interesting and want to eventually get into. Um, there, there's so, so many different types of people in the program. Um, the diversity is incredible. And so that, that's definitely been the biggest non-academic thing I think I would say I've encountered. Um, and those relationships you get to develop and maintain and take outside of the program, you know, they can lead to so many different things. Um, I know people that I've met um, through the program, when I lived in Los Angeles, they would fly out to Los Angeles for a business trip, but stay an extra two days and we'd hang out, talk business, talk school, talk personal. Um, so it's, it's for an online program, like I said, the networking, you don't feel like you're soloed off into uh, just a computer screen. Yeah, and I would just echo, echo that same sentiment is that it's a very, um, even though you're online and you're by yourself doing the, the coursework um, physically, uh, you really are connected. You really do have an opportunity to, um, not only through your teamwork, but also just through the, the out throughout the time that you're a student, you have opportunities to interact with a lot of different people. And as Josh mentioned, um, I'm personally stationed, that I, I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana, so I, there weren't a lot of other people around me, but even through that, even though I didn't necessarily get the in-person um, opportunities to meet up with people as much, there were a few, um, I still felt extremely connected and we could call each other and say, hey, I'm working through this problem, um, even if I wasn't in that same class. Hey, I know you took this class last semester and we're we've gotten connected throughout our time here, just being able to have build a network of people that you can um, talk through different issues in your career or just catch up. I, I had several friends throughout the program have kids while they were in, in school. And so uh, being able to send them baby gifts and things like that, it just, it's, 
it things relationships you're building for the long term, not necessarily just for that course. And um, I think that that's really special, especially in an online setting. Great. We've got a few more minutes to, to ask some questions. So I'm going to uh, reach back out to the attendees. And if you have more questions, please have those come in. And I'll, I'll take one here as well. And, and this question is regarding how you, how you manage and what the rhythm you got in to kind of do your coursework. You know, when did you find uh, the best time for you? Was it, was it early morning? Was it late at night? Was it dedicating hours? You know, um, Hillary, I'll start with you, but do you have kind of a, a rhythm that you got into and said, this is when it was best for me to work on my work, to have it done within the deliverable amount of time? And how did that plan work out for you? Yeah, so one of the things that I would do every semester is that I would go through as best as possible because obviously the syllabus and different things change, but I would go through and I would make a calendar of when all of the assignments were due and when all the exams were, um, when, if there was a, a group that we had to be a part of, we would set times and, and days that we would meet. And so for me, um, I'm not a morning person. So for me, it was a late night. Uh, I, I did my work later at night, but I was able to plan ahead weeks in advance to say, I have this exam or I have, um, I know that this paper is due on this week. And so um, I really tried to keep a schedule to say, okay, I'm going to keep this day open for some personal activities, but on Sundays, Sunday afternoons or Sunday evenings, this is when I'm going to do this or um, when the lectures come out on Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday nights, those are my nights to do to do my work. And I tried to, and it, it takes a couple weeks because you kind of have to figure out what the what the rhythm of the course is and, and how your professor works and, and what's going to work for your group or just you in that time and in that season of where you're at in your life or in your career. Um, I tried to do as best a calendar uh, and I did most of my stuff at night and I never had an issue with feeling like I was rushed or didn't have enough time to, to complete anything that needed to be done. Yeah, and, uh, for me, so, you know, kind of echo what I said earlier, just kind of let the, the information wash over you, let the course, let the syllabus, just kind of let it wash over you, get your groove. And uh, for me, my wife, for the majority of my program worked night shift. So, you know, I tend to schedule, um, you know, group meetings or coursework um, from when, uh, my wife was working. So, um, you know, it, it really depends on you, depends on the situation, and it depends on the semester. And some courses require a whole lot more outside of coursework, reading, um, uh, or, you know, assignments or things like that. And so, you know, you kind of just, you know, let it wash over, you come up with a game plan. And uh, I've done the calendar thing as well. And it was d definitely very, very beneficial when I kept it up. So, uh, um, yeah. Great. All right. Well, we've got time for one more question and we have a couple of things to wrap up at the end. So I want to ask, uh, as we end it out, you know, what, what piece of advice, um, and, and Hillary, I'll start with you. What piece of advice would you give a prospective student looking at beginning of the, the online MBA program here at Auburn? Yeah, I think that this might sound a little cliche or maybe uh, overly simple, but, um, enjoy your time serious it's it, it's a, a you know we've reiterated that it's a time commitment but enjoy it don't let yourself get so sucked into oh my goodness i have all of these things happening uh we've talked about it uh, take it in stride communicate as effectively as possible but do your best to enjoy it you're going to get more out of it if you um take the time to sit back and say I have committed to this for a reason and the experiences that I'm going through right now are going to help me in the long term to get to where I want to be. And I think if, if for me, at least, um, knowing that what I'm doing and the commitment that I'm doing right then and there, knowing that that's going to help me get to where I want to be in my career and in my life, uh, makes it all that much more enjoyable. So take the time and, and also know that if things shift and, and you go get in the program and you decide, well, I thought I wanted to do this, but I wanted to do this differently. You can still get so much out of the program to help whatever direction you're going in. And that is, that's a, that's a huge thing. And um, just, just take the time to enjoy it and use as many resources as there are available because 
it's only going to help you in the long run. Great. And then for me, I would say if, you know, be honest with yourself as you're evaluating programs, you know, truly, you know, determine what you want for yourself in the program, what your end goals are, and then be honest with yourself that, hey, this is a commitment, but it's an investment and you get exactly what you put into it. You know, if you put a lot into it, you will get so much more, you'll get tenfold back, um, you know, and just, you know, kind of echoing the same stuff that Hillary mentioned that, you know, enjoy it put a lot into it. You'll get a lot out. No, there may be some tough times, but it's only temporary. And, uh, you, you know, and just ha have fun. And, you know, if there's any kind of experience or any kind of opportunity that they offer, take advantage of it, use it. Um, and you will, you will definitely reap the benefits and the dividends, you know, going forward. Great guys. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. I know that uh, you both have made your uh, sales available on LinkedIn. So for our participants, you can look up Josh Jones and Hillary Butler on LinkedIn to make some further contacts. But thank you both again for your time. Greatly appreciate it. And it's been fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. So just a few closing items that we want you to, to be aware of. If you'd like more information about our online MBA program, uh, there's a website there that you can go to. If you want to see a sample class uh, of the online MBA, you can see what, what our students see by looking at a sample class online at that site. And if you're ready to apply for the program, uh, our, our next intake where we have uh, space available and we will be reviewing applications is going to be the fall uh, 2021 uh, intake. So we're welcome your application now and excited to have, uh, have your application come on in for us. You know, we definitely appreciate your interest. If there are other questions that you uh, had or would like to get next steps in this process, we invite you to, uh, to email us or our schedule an appointment. Uh, Ms. Julie Vaught is our uh, MBA admissions advisor and she's happy to chat with you more about uh, the next steps. And you can also schedule an appointment with Ms. Vaught by clicking on that QR code uh, to get more information. Now, as we, as we always do, whenever uh, people from the Auburn family uh, get together and then we depart, um, we always uh, uh, wish everybody well with a good, hearty uh, War Eagle. So War Eagle from here, uh, we thank you very much. Josh, Hillary, thank you very much for your time. And uh, you, we'll Eagle. be chatting with you all soon. Have a great thank night. You. War Eagle. Enjoy the rest of the evening. War Eagle, everybody. Thank you.